many, how many, how many shots were fired? Three. Two. Any of them fired at me? Uh, no, there was no, there, there. all three at the president. All three at the president, and we have them. Mm -hmm. uh, two of the shots fired at the president were splintered, uh, but they had characteristics on them so that our ballistic expert was able to prove that they were fired by this gun. Uh, the, the third shot, which uh, which hit the president, he was hit by the first and the third. The second shot hit the governor. The third shot is a completely is a complete bullet that wasn't shattered, and that rolled out of the president's head. I tore a large part of the president's head off. This official story would later change to accommodate the single bullet theory. Well, the interesting thing about that, you have two agents, his agents, present in an autopsy of the death of a president, and they don't testify before the Warren Commission. That is strange. Why? They travel all over the country, they try to grab every witness in Dealey Plaza, the ones they want to hear, and disregard the ones they don't want to hear, but you have two federal officers, federal agents, that don't testify for that warrant commission. It's plain and simple. They didn't want to talk to them because they saw something totally different than what they wanted to hear. Once they arrived at the conclusion, and that was done already the day of the death, the day of the autopsy, that Lee Harvey Oswald was a sole assassin, then everything had to fit. That all the shots had to come from back to front, from right to left, and from up downward. And, and, and no matter what they had found, it was going to be squeezed in. That's what gave birth to the single bullet theory, which has been attributed primarily to Arlen Specter, now U.S. Senator from Pennsylvania, uh, but which was then seized upon by everybody because they had to grab as a drowning man floundering in a sea with tempestuous.